Here we are, Mrs. Ennis. I don't want them. Oh, now, come on, Mrs. Ennis, please. Tear them away. They'll make you better. That's what the tablets are for. None of them do any good. Not one. I'm sick of them. Now, do you hear? Take them away, girl. She thinks I'm in spinched a stupid old wash bag. Well, I certainly didn't take it if that's what you're insinuating. That will do, nurse. Well, that's what she's more or less suggesting. No, I don't think you did take it. I'm sure you're not short of a couple of pounds to buy yourself a decent sponge bag with. There now, Mrs. Ennis, there's no cause to fret. You probably got put in someone else's locker by mistake. It's just not on, sister. And what exactly do you expect me to do about it, nurse? Well, tell her. She can't go around accusing nurses of pinching her stupid gear. As I understand it, Mrs. Ennis hasn't specifically accused anybody. She practically said it was Nurse Morahan. Nurse Morahan doesn't seem particularly upset. Yeah, well, she's not the type to make a fuss. Oh, and you are. I think you are rather overreacting to the incident, nurse. You were warned in training school that some patients, particularly elderly or cantankerous ones, would occasionally accuse you of taking things. And we've just got to stand for it? Understand, not stand. These people are sick, disorientated. We can't apply the same standards to them as we do to those outside. Yes, they sometimes get paranoid. But mightn't you if you were chronically ill for several years? Her body might be sick, but her mind certainly isn't. She's a vicious, evil-tempered old woman. That will do, nurse. Please return to your duties. Problem. No problem. I've got my sponge bag back. The girls obviously felt differently about it. Are you saying Nurse Morahan took it? Well, of course she took it. When I made a fuss, she got scared and pretended to find it. A uh, empty locker indeed. It's all right, Pat. Forget it, please. I won't bloody well forget it. I don't mind, really. No, well, you might not, but I do. What's it got to do with you anyway? I was talking to her. Mrs. Ennis. You really are the most ungrateful, diabolical old bitch it has ever been my misfortune to meet. Ah! Oh, no! The incident on the ward this morning was the straw that broke the camel's back. But it's not sufficient reason in itself for your resigning. But it's so wrong that patients can treat nurses like dirt and get away with it. As though being ill excused you of all normal codes of behaviour. Do all patients do it? No. Perhaps we should screen them before they come in. Admit only those that guarantee they'll behave nicely. All right, I'm being unreasonable. Ennis was a bitch and Maureen... Nurse Morahan. She's just too damn gentle to stand up for herself. Perhaps she didn't need to. Nurse Morahan may have been objective enough to see the situation as it really was and felt perfectly able to tolerate it. As I should. Why did you come into nursing in the first place? Well, for all the usual reasons. And what are they? No. Tell me. Well, it seemed a worthwhile job. Interesting. Seemed to have lots of possibilities. I like people. No, I, I do. I enjoy helping them. Most of them. What have you learned about rheumatoid arthritis, nurse? Well, it's miserable. Uh, it's a slow, debilitating process. Must be frustrating as hell. And what's the prognosis for a patient like Mrs. Ennis? Do you know? Not good. She can't be cured. The damage has already been done. The condition can be alleviated. Or could be if she'd help. Stop resenting every damn thing we try and do for her. Take her drugs, for instance, instead of chucking them all over the floor. Don't you think... 
even a saint might be a trifle disgruntled after a few years of what she's gone through, lose the will to make the effort. Yes, I know. I've been through all that with sister. But she's a bad-tempered, arrogant, ungrateful old cow. Oh, I shouldn't say it. I've no right to say it. God knows she's a sick and sad old woman. I should find enough compassion in me to tolerate her. Even if I can't like her. They can't all be lovable. The whole point is, it's not her that's wrong. It's me. Now, it's no use being all right with some of the patients. It's just not good enough, is it? Just now, you gave me some pretty strong reasons why you came into nursing. There's nothing left of that. Has it all gone completely? Well, I don't know about gone. It's just been dissipated. Partly by the Mrs. Ennis thing, but also... Well, I just didn't realize there'd be so many petty rules and restrictions. Oh, not half as many as there used to be. Most of them are not petty. They're there for a damn good reason, though. It's not always immediately apparent. Oh. I suppose you think I'm honor-bound to defend the system. No, I don't. What would you do if you did leave? It's not that you've got a special urge to do something else? No, nothing particularly. Forget the things that irk you for the moment, Mrs. Ennis included. You're disappointed with your training so far? Well, I thought it would all fall into place once I got on the wards, but... You don't feel stretched enough? Well, I realize I'm terribly raw and new, but... Well, yes. I mean, I'm 22. Maureen, for instance, is only 18. Well, we've had women in their 30s who've married and had children before they started training. They've coped. Well, perhaps I'm just not cut out for it. Have you considered any of the other aspects? Of nursing? Of the health service. Physiotherapy. Radiography. Why are you trying to find me alternatives, Mr. Farrer? Just because you feel you failed in one direction, you think we should wash our hands of you? Well, I would in your place. No, we don't let girls of ability go that easily. Besides, you must have wanted to be in a caring situation. Otherwise, you'd never have come into nursing in the first place. Half an hour ago, I just felt like packing my bags and walking straight out. No, it happens. But usually only with girls who are totally unsuitable or unstable, and you're neither. Thanks. Besides, your contract of employment states that you have to give a month's notice. You'd relinquish your pay if you did just walk out. Yes, well, a letter of resignation is not too difficult. If you do decide to leave. Well, I rather thought that's what I'd already decided. Talk it over with your family and friends. Come and see me in a week's time. Let me know how it's going. Thanks. Oh, and thank you for being so accessible. Well, that's the aim. There was a time when a girl couldn't even have a chat with a tutor. Starch doesn't want just in the aprons. <laughs> uh, it might be worth your while to talk to one of the physiotherapists. Ask a few questions in that direction. Thank you. Said it was all right for us to sneak in at the back when they finished the speeches. If you like. Of course. Don't you want to see them? Not particularly. Oh, I suppose so. Just think, all the family there are watching you. What's wrong, Pat? Nothing. Are you still upset about that Mrs. Ennis business? Good Lord, no. I'm packing it in. Packing it in? That's right. What, you're training? Nursing the whole thing. But you can't! Well, I can, you know. All I've got to do is sign a letter of resignation. 
They don't actually clap you in irons and hang drawn court you for it. Oh, Maureen, don't look at me like that. Go and see the physiotherapist then. What for? You just told me Mr. Farris suggested you found out more about it. I doubt it. I think it's a first class idea. If you really do mean to give up nursing, I'm sure you'd like it fine. Maureen, honestly, I'd have to go right back to square one. It's a three year training course. So is this and you're prepared to do it? I can't go in for all that long term planning. So how many times do you give up and run? Because I chuck teaching. You must want to get somewhere, Pat. What you're really saying is I've got no stability. A reed that blows in the wind. I'm not. I think you've got plenty of stability. You've just got to dig a bit to find it. If you keep giving up every time you begin to doubt yourself, where is it going to end? You know, you sound just like my father. The only one who's been making decisions. You'd really stay on another four or five years? Just to be nearer six. Three years to get me SRN. That's if I pass first time. Then my midwifery. Then a couple of years of staff nurse before I can do my health visitors training. And that's another year. Ye gods. You're not serious. Why shouldn't I be? Well, in the first place, you only got the idea yesterday. I think it's what's right for me. Of course, I'll have to talk it over with Mammy in the holidays. It's only fair to prepare her. She'll understand. And that's the second reason. You were going potty when you first came here at the thought of leaving your family for only three years. Couldn't you do the course at home? There's only one college in Belfast. I'd have to be very lucky to get a place. Most Irish girls wanting to do health visiting come over here. But love... I mean, how can you? How can I what? Commit yourself. Isn't that what life's all about? One way or another. But Maureen, you're only 18. How can you possibly know what you want to do in another three years' time? How can you be so certain? Sure, they asked me the very same thing when I was seven years old. When I told them I was going to be a nurse. <laughs>